Hello everybody and um, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon. I hope you've all been doing your chair dancing while you were watching the housekeeping slides this afternoon. I'm Sharon Blakely. I'm one of the engagement program direct program managers within the community engagement directorate and I'd really like to welcome you to our webinar this afternoon on engaging innovatively on social media. We're really pleased that you could take the time to join us. To help us with the sound and picture quality during the presentation, can you please keep your camera and your mic off? You can use the chat box throughout the webinar and to share any questions or comments, and we'll pick those up um, in the Q&A session at the end. We will be sharing the presentation slides on the recording of the webinar on our website. There will be a link dropped into the, the chat box at some point about our upcoming events and how you can book for future webinars. And if you have any questions, you'll be able to contact Linda Young our events and publicity officer and again our email address will appear in the chat box. So without further ado I'm going to hand you over to Lucy Dorian from NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. It's nice to see you again Lucy uh, and leave the rest of the session down to you. Thanks very much Sharon. Um, for those of you that don't know me my name is Lucy Dorian and I am one of the PEPI team. I'm patient engagement and public involvement manager with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Um, I'm here to introduce Ewan. So Ewan is our star speaker for the day. Uh, Ewan joined the patient experience and public involvement team with NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde in March last year. He plays a key role in promoting the board's listening and learning culture online, using social media, website and other digital tools to engage with patients and the public. His work involves collaborating with services and producing social media engagement campaigns. He co-produced the board's social media strategy and action plan and is committed to exploring new ways of engaging with patients online. So with that, without further ado, I will hand you over to Ewan. Thank you. Thanks, Lucy. Hi, everyone. Um, yep, so as Lucy said, I'm Ewan Elder and I work within the patient experience public involvement team at NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Um, so today we're going to be looking at how we have been engaging innovatively on social media. Um, I'm sharing my screen, so if you have any questions or anything uh, during the session, please just put your hand up um, and someone on our end can tell me to be quiet. <laughs> um, and I hope, can you see my slides? Uh, Lucy, could you just confirm if they're up on the screen? Yes, they are. Yeah, perfect, that's grand. Okay, so let's start. Um, so today I thought it would just be helpful um, to get with a little outline of what we're gonna cover. And um, we're gonna start with some poll questions just to gaze how you are using social media. So Lisa is just gonna, I send the first poll in now. Um, if you could please just vote on it, it'll either appear on your screen um, or you can access it through the chat box once it's ready. Um, so we'll go over the kind of answers to the two poll questions to begin with, and then we'll start to look at a bit of the background in terms of how this work really came about, and um, then starting to look at kind of the reasons why we engage on social media, um, as well as looking at maybe like how we use each platform to engage. Um, we'll then cover some strengths and weaknesses of this as an engagement approach. Um, and then we'll then cover some case studies just in terms of some engagement campaigns that we have been doing to engage with patients and the public. Um, and then we'll finish off with just a bit of our kind of future goals for how we're going to use social media. Um, and then we'll have a Q&A and a chance for you to share your thoughts. Um, but as I said, we'll have the Q&A session, but if you do want to ask any questions, then please just put them in the chat um, and we'll have a kind of mid conversation break um, during the middle of the session. So if you want to ask anything then um, and we'll be happy to answer it whenever. Um, so Lisa has hopefully added the first poll to the chat by now, um, but we'll just I'll just ask Lisa if you could please add the second one. Um, so we began by asking um, how many of you, well, uh, if you use any of these social media platforms, specifically Facebook, Twitter or Instagram in your personal life. Um, Nicole, could you please read out just kind of the responses that are coming in in terms of how people are using the social media personally? So for personally, the biggest one is Facebook, which is 39% of people, followed by Instagram at 31%, and then closely followed by Twitter at 28%. Okay, ideal. Um, so we've got quite like people and um, we've covered all of the platforms um, and there's a good gist um, in terms of each three. 
Um, and then just to ask Nicole, have people got back in terms of how their or what social media platforms their organisations use? We're just going to be a couple of minutes, is that okay? Yeah, no worries. Yeah, no, no problem at all. <laughs> so, apologies. Um, <laughs> it's different this time. So the top one is actually Twitter with 45% followed by Facebook at 38% and Instagram at 15%. Okay, interesting. Um, well, there's not really a right answer uh, there. Um, it was really just to use these polls to illustrate that um, so many of you attending today um, and so many other people in the world are using social media platforms personally um, and a lot of your organisations are using them professionally. Um, so for us, the reasons kind of why why would you use social media to engage what kind of why not there's people there to speak with there's people there that want to speak with you um so let's explore it and see what you can do with it um so to kind of add to the background of that thank you very much nicole um during the COVID 19 pandemic like we all know the world stopped people stopped interacting with each other so there was that quite a clear need to accelerate your kind of digitization process um and for us from an engagement perspective like having an in-person event wasn't possible anymore um so it's kind of since march 2020 um uh, well, actually that's a lie since march 2021 i should say when i joined the team um patient experience public involvement or PEPI, have really enhanced our use of digital tools to engage with patients and the public um and social media has played a really key role in that and has really enhanced our ability to not only really communicate quickly and get messages out really fast, but also in terms of accelerating how we can collect and gather feedback about our care and services. Um, and that's quite innovative. Use of social media has really empowered us to not only utilize interactive features on platforms, um, but also to kind of better promote our listening and learning culture online. Um, so, Kind of why we engage on social media. Um, my answer is kind of why not, but um, my proper answer is we're really fortunate to have a, a large following on social media. So for NHS GDC, we have 55,000 followers on Facebook. We have 33.7 thousand on Twitter and 11.4 thousand on Instagram. Um, so that's thousands of users that are out there that we can be sharing messages with, we can be asking how they feel. Um, and it's a good opportunity to just really gather how people who are interested in their health board really want to see it change. Um, another reason kind of why we do it is that people can access social media whenever, wherever. So using social media is kind of a part of people's everyday routine. It's, it's definitely a part of my everyday routine. And it's an easy way to invite people to take part in engagement as you're not really having to rely on them coming to like a specific location or coming at a specific time to get involved. Um, another reason why is that content can be quick and easy to pull together. So it's much easier to spend maybe five, 10 minutes getting an Instagram story right or getting a Twitter poll than hosting an event and, and hearing back from 500 people, I should say, than hosting an event um, for or 500 people and get asking them for their feedback. So really, it's just focusing on how can you pull together some simple, straightforward questions and quickly get feedback on that topic, service or organisation. Um, another reason is that you can reach diverse audiences online. So people of all demographics um, and all backgrounds are on social media. So you can definitely find who you want to be talking to. Um, another point is that it can create space for targeted engagements with harder to reach groups. So if you're going out and using social media for kind of like, let's say mass engagement, um, you can then really start to hone in on in terms of who you want to be speaking to um, and form your future engagements, whether that's through maybe like one to one interviews um, or any protected characteristic engagement. Um, and then lastly, it can complement in person engagement. So something we do quite often is in terms of if we use social media to kind of get people's interest in a specific topic, ask them how they feel and if they want to come to maybe another engagement event and um, then they can do that or we can just use social media engagement to kind of reflect what's been talked about in both places. Um, so 
In terms of really how we use each platform to engage, um, I'll go through kind of the main three that we use. We tend to keep our engagement on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram as these are like our main social media channels. Um, so on Facebook, a big thing that we do is put out information. Um, if you are engaging on a topic, then people need to know what you're talking about um, and you need, them to, need to give them the information for them to give their opinion. So a big thing we do is let them know what's happening um and then more kind of interactive sites on facebook tends to be comments so as you can see let me get my laser pointer here it is um so something we do quite often on facebook is we ask people just to comment on a post um and just say like how they feel about it if they have any feedback um and what we did in this example on the bottom right here is for international day of the midwife we asked people to share their kind of like favorite midwife memory um, and we got a lot of good feedback that we were then able to share with the service um, and really boost staff's morale on that quite special day. Um, otherwise, what we do in terms of engagement on Facebook does tend to be kind of linking to any other websites, any external forms. So you can see for GP up hours, we link to the online form from a Facebook post and um, that just means that people aren't having to jump to your website to find anything. It's just right there and they can take part or you can link to any other site. So here we have Care Opinion, which is one of our feedback mechanisms. Um, another, another thing that you can do in Facebook um, is using Facebook groups. Um, so it's not something my team are currently using at the moment for engagement, um, but I won't go into too much detail. Basically, the difference between a Facebook page on a Facebook group is that where your page is very much kind of you putting out information about a topic, about your organisation um, and people see it. A group is that much more kind of conversational approach to using Facebook. So you can put in content, members of the group can put in content um, and you can speak with each other, share images, etc. Um, You've also got different things like different privacy settings so you can control who could see the content, who could post content um, and if you want a good example of someone who has done it for engagement then definitely check out the Northern Ireland Maternity Facebook group um, where they share a lot of kind of good news stories but they also put out a lot of engagement opportunities in terms of um, help shape maternity services in Northern Ireland. Um, so that's Facebook. Um, when it comes to Twitter, this is one of our more kind of popular channels that we put out engagement content on. So in terms of Twitter, again, we share a lot of information. Um, Twitter is now one of the top sources people get news from. Um, so if you are doing anything, you are developing any services and definitely get something out there. Um, but in terms of that and can interactive features, you've got a lot more in terms of the use of Twitter polls. So you can see here on the top right, um, or what matches to you do this year, we asked if people have asked someone what matches to them today um, and that we, they were then able to vote either yes or no. So with a Twitter poll, you can choose up to two or four options that people can vote between um, and you can also say how long a poll should be up for. Um, with that, um, it's good um it's just to be making sure that you keep your answers kind of short as there is a character limit on the poll options um another thing we do is use kind of mentions and hashtags so you'll see for what matters to you day this year we asked if people could tweet us about their meaningful conversations using at nhsgdc and hashtag what matters to you 2020 2022. Um, that just means that we were then able to search for any tweets that use that hashtag and use that mention um, and we could see the conversations that people were having um, and got a lot of good feedback from there. If you are using hashtags it's always good just to make sure you're researching them um, and nobody else is using them or no one else is using them inappropriately and um, also make sure that they're accessible. So if you're using hashtag with maybe like three words like hashtag engage with us and um, then make sure you capitalize the first letter of each word just to increase readability. Um, something else we do on Twitter is kind of the use of replies so very similar to what we did for International Midwives Day on Facebook just ask if people will respond to our tweet with any of their views or opinions um, and then we also link to external websites and any surveys and forms which you can see we did here for GP out of hours as well. Um, and then finally is just um, use of Instagram. Um, I thought it maybe be a bit 
it would be worth spending a bit of time just explaining the difference between an Instagram post and Instagram story. Um, I know, I think Nicole said about 40% of you use Instagram in your personal life, if I've got that number correct, apologies if not. Um, so if you know this, well done. But um, if not, basically we tend to use Instagram stories for our engagement as opposed to Instagram posts. Um, the difference between them being is that this is on your left is kind of like your home screen if you're on Instagram and on the right here we've got basically this is like your Instagram profile. Um, so if you're on your home screen it will be a bar along the top to access your story so each one of these circles is a story and on the right here if you click on your profile picture you'll get the story because it's highlighted in the kind of pinky yellow a colour. Um, so basically the difference between these is that your Instagram story is kind of a picture, video or graphic that you can put out and it'll last for 24 hours. Um, and with that, you can then add some interactive features and links to other websites that people can engage with. Um, because your story is only active for 24 hours, what you can do um, is that you can create a highlight of it on your account. Um, so this means that people can see it after it has been, if after it's gone. Um, I should also note here that you can still find your stories and what if people interacted with it and the answers to it after it has gone away. So don't worry, you can access that. Um, but your followers won't be able to unless it is a highlight. And then lastly, just an Instagram post. So if you see here, it's kind of if you've used Facebook or Twitter, um, it will just appear on your feed or you can be on your account and you'll see all your posts. And these are just either picture or a video that will live forever on your Instagram. You can add a caption, add some hashtags, some mentions, but you can't add any links to external sites on your posts. Um, so it just basically just doesn't let you use hyperlinks. Um, so that's quite important for engagement. And then users will be able to like, comment and share your posts as well. Um, so in terms of how we actually use it for engagement, um, social media lesson over. Um, in terms, we tend to use Instagram stories just because they have those kind of interactive features on them. Um, so the features that we tend to use are polls, quizzes and question boxes. Um, Instagram has recently updated their polls feature to allow you to use up to four options. It used to just be two, as you can see here that we've got the story for the support and information service. Um, so again, you can so now it's kind of similar to the Twitter poll. You've got up to four options um, and you can define whatever those answers are. Um, but I would note you want to keep kind of keep them short. There is a character limit and um, the users will be able to vote between them. A quiz is very similar. The only difference between a quiz and a poll is that you can choose basically the right answer. Um, and if someone guesses the right answer, it will basically come up as green and some confetti will appear. So it's quite fun. Um, and then otherwise we use kind of question boxes. So this is what you can see on the right here when we've asked kind of what non-clinical matters can we help with. So users can basically then write in a response um, and it'll give you quite clear written answers that you can start to action. Um, again, it, there is a limited response, so don't ask people to start writing essays, um, but there's definitely room for people to get their ideas down. Um, and something else you can do on an Instagram story as well, it's just linked to either an external website um, or any surveys or anything that you would like people to access. Um, so in terms of, kind of who we engage with on our social media, this is very specific to NHS GDC. So if you are interested in looking at your own socials, we definitely recommend like to base it on the people who interact with you because it could be different to us. Um, and that will then basically inform the kind of content questions you maybe want to be engaging on in terms of like on your social media. So for us, um, I mean, this is like a rough estimate and there's obviously every kind of person on every channel, but anecdotally, it tends to be that we get a very broad mix of patients, staff and the public on our Facebook. Um, on our Twitter, we tend to get more staff um, and then on Instagram, we get more patients in the public. What that means is that we do kind of put out very general content on each platform. Um, but if we are doing any like social media engagement, if something is kind of more specific about staff or we want staff involved in the campaign, then we'd definitely be putting that out on Twitter. Um, 
so I thought I'd just kind of take a quick break now um, and ask kind of who engages with your organization's social media. Um, so Lisa's just going to put a poll in the chat now. Um, if you don't know, definitely do not worry. Um, if none of them apply, again, that's completely fine if that's not your stakeholders. Um, and if you are feeling confident enough, then please let us know maybe how your stakeholders engage with you on your social media in the chat box. Um, you could use, use a GIF. Um, maybe they send you good feedback. They tell you um, what needs to change. Um, it would just be good to know kind of the engagements that you're getting and seeing if they're similar to us. Um, but I'll give you a minute just to take that all in um, and vote on the poll and stuff. Um, but it'd be great to hear from you just in terms of who you really got on social media. Hi, Ewan. I was just going to say the chat box has been very busy. So <laughs> <laughs> you won't be able to see, but it's been pingity pinging all, all the, the whole time. Lots of really interesting questions. Um, so just while the polls are, are getting filled in, I was just going to say there was also a couple of very early points from Christine Muir and from Michelle Muir about using LinkedIn and Christine about using YouTube and Michelle about using Vimeo for engagement. So just in terms of other things, um, I've asked if they maybe want to share later on. That may be a good thing to do. Yep, but I will be quiet because yeah. I think the polls are now in. So. Amazing. Um, Nicole, do you want to do the honours? Yes, so predominantly it's 37% for staff, followed by 34% for the public and 28% for patient and service users. There are quite a number of questions in the chat box. Do you want to wait to the end to pick them up, Ewan? Um, are there any are there any like that are super burning? Um, if anyone wants to send the call and message now and like answer mine now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's just a few comments about boosting messages as well and how to kind of increase each. Okay, um, maybe let's cover that at the end if that's okay, yeah. please. Thank you. Um, has anyone sent in just in terms of how people might engage with them on their social media? Um, Samantha's just saying that they currently have a close Facebook page, but today they're going to make it public so and hopefully engage with the public. Awesome, yeah, no, definitely. Um, and you know, this having a close Facebook group has its a major benefits and having an open one does as well so definitely do what's right for you. And Rachel was saying that they also engage with third sector professionals as well. Awesome nice Um, yeah so something that's really good that we find on our social media is really trying to stay work with any of your stakeholders and just tag people Um, even if you're working on something that's maybe relevant to like a community group then why not just send them a direct message and ask if they'd like to share it, if they'd like to um, take part in it. Um, it's a good way to find people. A big thing with social media now is it's not about people coming to you, it's about you going to them. Um, but there'll probably be loads of questions about that, so I can explain that in more detail after. <laughs> um, so I'm happy to move on if that's okay, Nicole. Okay. Grand. Um, so please keep firing questions in, that's amazing. Um, it's good to see people are interested. Um, so now I'm just going to go quickly over in terms of um, the strengths that we've found with social media engagement. Um, so kind of building on what I've just said, like one of the key strengths is that you're meeting people where they are. So people are on social media whilst they're sitting on the bus, they're at home um, and they're already online and looking for things that interest them. Um, so if you can be engaging and you can spark someone's interest with kind of answer this question, answer this poll, um, then you could draw their attention and encourage them to get involved in the future. Um, another big benefit is that you're using social media effectively. Um, so to kind of summarise what I mean with this is that social media platforms want you to get people to engage with their content. So I'll probably say the words engage and engagements a lot when I'm talking about like a post engagement that's basically like a like a comment a click a view anything that anyone's doing anything with your post um so if you're getting people to give you a lot of engagements and um, that means people are going to spend longer on your account because they're going to be interested in it they're going to keep wanting to engage with it etc 
And if you are getting people to stay on your account for longer, that means they're staying on the platform for longer. So the social media algorithms are very happy with you. <laughs> and that means that they're going to show your content to more people. So you're going to engage with more users. And um, so it's very circular. So the more engaging you can be, the more you can encourage people to like interact with you on your social media, um, then the better it will be. Um, another big thing is that you can quickly hear from users. Um, so there's a lot less kind of preparation time and resource if you're putting out an Instagram story and hearing from 500 users compared to you trying to plan a big engagement event um, and coordinate how you're going to get everyone in one place. Um, so it offers you that chance to like, do other things with your engagement. Um, you can also can kind of control the feedback you receive. So a big thing we realized quite early on was that our polls and our quizzes were getting a lot more responses than our use of kind of question boxes. Um, so if you're wanting to get like kind of big numbers and see just like quick responses, how do you feel about this? Um, then definitely use something like a poll or a quiz on your Instagram story. But if you're wanting very like qualitative data and getting kind of clear responses that you can action on, then definitely go for the question box. Um, Another big strength is that you can connect with a range of stakeholders. So we know that patients, staff and the public are all on social media. And um, so it's a quite a clear way for us to engage with them. And then another big thing is you're very much in the centre of what's kind of new and what's trending. So um, if you take something new, so take something like TikTok, and TikTok has been a really good example of an app and a platform that's managed to create loads of very big trends um, and something that organizations have done is kind of harness onto those trends and share their own messages so if you know about TikTok you'll definitely know that people were dancing and sharing stories and um, so if you can use anything new like that and if you can take days like International Midwives Day and ask people to talk about it with you and ask people to share your messages and um, when it's already popular and trending, then you're definitely going to get people involved. Um, on the flip side of that, there are some weaknesses to using social media engagement that you do need to consider. So there can be challenges with tracking demographics and reach in marginalized communities. Um, so a big thing is that Twitter doesn't really share who its audience demographics are. Um, so you won't really know who you're engaging with Twitter. Additionally, you might know the rough estimate on your Facebook and Instagram in terms of like who your top audience are, but not everyone who follows your page will see your content. Um, they won't see every post, so you can't confirm who it is who has seen every single post. Um, another thing can be digital illiteracy and poverty. So not everyone's going to be comfortable using social media or have access to social media. So that's like that big kind of reminder that it's important to combine that digital and non-digital approach just to make sure that everyone's comfortable and they have the chance to get involved. Um, something else we identified was kind of troll culture and how we avoid that. Um, so troll culture is basically when people are just kind of mean or nasty online and um, another way to put it and um, there's not really a reason for it um, and it's kind of difficult because you're trying to find that balance between giving people the space to maybe voice when something hasn't gone well um, and share their critiques and um, constructive ones let's say um, but also like preventing people from just being kind of negative for the sake of it. What we've found as a kind of solution to that is if you are doing um, any engagement um, with like a social media engagement with like an online survey, then we would recommend just comparing the social media feedback to the survey feedback and seeing if there's like a clear kind of difference. And if there is, um, then troll culture could be a factor why the social media feedback was more negative. Um, and then lastly, you know, being careful about this data sensitivity. Um, obviously, social media is public, so make sure you're not asking anyone to put anything out that you wouldn't want to share yourself. Um, and it's really important that you have those kind of protocols in place that if someone did share anything sensitive, you would know how to deal with it. And you would know how to support that individual. Um, so kind of moving on to give you a bit of a um, 
overall timeline in terms of the social media engagement that we've been working on. I really kind of started last summer um, with our GP out of hours social media engagement. Um, and then our other kind of three high level engagement campaigns have been the work that we did on our support and information services, um, the work we're doing on hospital visiting, as well as our e-medicines and prescribing services that was in March this year. Um, I won't go over the GP out of hours social media engagement campaign just because we have recently we've recently had our case study published on the his website and um, so if you are interested in finding out more about it then please click on the link that Lucy is going to share in the chat and um, you'll basically find out about how, how, how the first time we did use social media on engage use social media to engage when um that was our first time doing it so it was a really good chance for us really to explore kind of what's possible with social media engagement and also identify a lot of the learning opportunities that I've discussed today um to give you some kind of big overview highlights um it was a two-week social media campaign very much kind of promoting the survey that we were doing at the time as well as kind of gathering feedback on social media just about people's experiences of the service um, we ended up in two weeks getting 973 engagements on our Facebook Twitter and Instagram posts and we shared a number of Instagram stories and had 1500 no I'm lying 1350 um, responses and kind of interactions on our polls and things on our Instagram stories um, so definitely check out the case study and if you have any questions then please send them over to us um, but otherwise so some case studies of what we have done um, another one of our engagement campaigns was the support and information service that we did kind of at the end of last year um, so we engaged in social media very much to inform the future of this service for those of you who aren't familiar this is a service which supports patients carers relatives and staff and with any kind of non-clinical matters whilst they're either in or they're leaving hospital and um, the campaign itself was similar to GP at hours it was kind of raising awareness of the support and information service and it also collected feedback about what kind of non-clinical matters people wanted support with and um, so what we did was we built a campaign which it was included content such as like tweets twitter polls and instagram stories using kind of polls question boxes quizzes and some link stickers um, and overall in the span of two weeks we heard from 507 users so that was the total number of likes comments shares clicks etc that we got um, and for us that was a really good chance to see like how quickly we could get feedback on our service that was maybe kind of not well not as well known as the GP of hours um, and it, we could really see how we could start to shape and inform a lot of our services using just kind of quick real-time social media feedback um, why we kind of planned the campaign on Twitter and Instagram and why we do that quite often is very much because of the kind of interactive features that both of these platforms offer um, as well as having that mix of audience between patients staff and the public um, we worked very much in partnership with the service so I worked with them from that kind of initial brief to regular updates during the campaign to kind of reporting on what we heard and answering any of their questions um, our main focus was really on finding out kind of what the service didn't know at the time and what they needed to know they as they kind of support people with any non-clinical matters they knew what mattered to people pre-COVID um, but obviously that was kind of one year and a half after COVID and people's needs have naturally changed so they wanted to make sure that they were still providing that right level of care um, so kind of benefits of the campaign I think of the work itself was that the team were then able to actually inform the future of their service based on social media feedback which highlighted kind of needs of patients in the public post-COVID um, and it also increased users awareness of the service and um, which is which is definitely a good thing in that more people are going to receive that non-clinical support they might need while they're maybe in or leaving hospital particularly about a service that like I didn't know about until I worked on it too um, another example we have is our work that we did with e-medicines and our prescribing services and um, so we 
created a one week social media engagement campaign and um, that was modeled on a traditional online survey. What I mean by that is that I basically took the questions from the online survey and I turned them into a social media engagement campaign. Um, so the campaign used Twitter and Instagram stories again, and it really aimed to kind of promote the survey on social media. And it also aimed to collect views from patients and the public about their experiences of our prescribing service. Um, by applying learning from the CIS work, we managed to achieve 597 engagements and basically half the time. So for CIS, we got just over 502 weeks, whereas this time we were 597 in just one week. Um, how we did that, it was very much by using our Instagram stories effectively um, and sharing content on Twitter when users are most active. The reason why that's important to that on Twitter is very much your Twitter feed is pretty much in chronological order. Um, so if you're putting content out when most people are active, then it's more likely that they're going to see it and they're going to participate in it. Um, in terms of the campaign, um, the service were then able to add social media feedback to their engagement report. And this report and the feedback itself were then used to inform content at their further engagement events. Um, and that just highlights how you can really use social media feedback to kind of complement other engagement approaches. Um, and we as a team really discovered how we could work better with our communications colleagues in terms of campaign planning. So one of the things that we did here um, was that people wanted more messaging about what serial prescriptions are. Um, so we were then able to apply that knowledge and put out that extra information. Um, just as people had said that like they didn't know what it was, they wanted to hear more about it. Um, and really why that is important is that it benefits both us and the communications team and that for comms, it's going to make sure that we're putting out content that people want to see, people want to engage with our social media, they want to follow it um, because they're getting something out of it. And for us, it's showing that we're actively listening to our audiences um, and we're promoting our listening and learning culture online. Um, Finally, our kind of last case study is a bit different. So this isn't very much of an engagement campaign. Um, what we've been doing is we've been recording and reporting on social media engagements um, about hospital visiting. So what I mean that by that is that we're looking for any comments, tweets, direct messages, anything online um, which mentions or asks questions about hospital visiting. Um, this work really came about as a result of the ongoing changes to hospital visiting earlier this year. Um, and the feedback, what it does is that it really gives us a way of hearing people's experiences of hospital visiting and how they were changing in real time. Um, what we could then do was encourage that kind of early resolution whilst people were in hospital, as opposed to waiting until after they'd been discharged. Um, and there's issues with that and that issues maybe could have got escalated um, or they've just been put aside and that's not providing the best care that we can. Um, so I just wanted to share a kind of quick quote that we received from the service just about that work. Um, so the quote is basically just talking about how the social media feedback has helped them to really act on patients, relatives and carers opinions on the changes to hospital visiting. Um, and what they highlight is that more people are giving feedback on social media than on like care opinion or on our online feedback form. So these are kind of like our traditional feedback routes. Um, and what the feedback also does is that it allows us to kind of, what social media does is that it allows us to have two, com two way conversations and address this feedback um, and hopefully resolve any concerns that we can. Um, in reflection, um, we've had massive amounts of feedback on social media um, and there's been a lot of conversations about hospital visiting um, and that just shows like the importance of us kind of being part of those conversations. Um, so what we've done is that we've by like taking learning um, from this approach is that listening to stakeholders and engaging in two-way conversations is now kind of key to our future goals for social media. Um, more specifically, it's actually being implemented into our new social media strategy itself. Um, and in addition to that, um, the PEP team 
are we're now kind of better equipped to really voice people's experiences and enable services to deliver better care on the basis of us not only using social media to communicate and uh, we're also using social media to listen and engage too. Um, so just finally, um, our future use of social media, where practice. Um, so we want to keep doing this. this isn't just one conversation. Um, anything that that goes well for us, we're very happy to share um, and share what we've learned from it. And we'll be introducing our new social media strategy soon. Um, so as I mentioned, that we'll have engagement in that. So we will definitely let you know. Um, how that goes and how engagement on social media being a key component of our social media plans um, is shifting and evolving over time. Um, another goal is that we're going to keep exploring new platforms and any new trends. Um, so we as a team are committed to being kind of future facing and staying on top of any developments in platforms um, because these are the updates that are going to allow us to kind of continue engaging with patients in the public and making sure that engagement is kind of innovative and interesting as that's what's going to keep people interested. Um, another thing we're going to do is that we're going to connect with our partners to expand learning and identify opportunities and um, so that's very much where you come in <laughs> um, whilst we're staying on top of trends and anything that's changing we don't know everything and um, so we're very much keen to work with and learn with learn from you all I want to say um, just to make sure that our social media engagement is as effective as possible and then lastly we're going to embed digital and social media engagement as kind of standard across all our engagement work and um, we want to kind of shift the narrative that social media is just like an as on um, and really investigate how we can make sure that our social media engagement is being used as effectively as possible for kind of any engagement that we're doing and um, so that's kind of it from me for today. Um, I hope that was really helpful. Um, it was really nice to share it with you all. Um, and I'm happy to take questions now, but if you do want to kind of have any follow-up conversations um, or if you'd be interested in maybe kind of setting up like a digital social media, interactive social media group, um, then just fire me an email. Um, I've got it there and Nicole's gonna add it to the chat as well. Um, but thank you very much for today. And I think I'm passing back to Lucy. Thank you very much, Ewan. Um, Nicole's been frantically looking at questions in the background, I think, haven't you, Nicole? <laughs> it's, it's really, it's been absolutely, you know, constant. So there's loads of questions. I don't know if we'll have time to go through them all. Um, do you want me to have a wee bit of a, a go at a few of the big themes, Nicole, just while you're oh, gathering some of the questions? Would that help? I think some of the questions were about how to manage the risks yeah. and about an appropriate content and trolling as well. And how do we manage that? So oh, I don't know. Have am I on mute? No, no, you're, you're, you're. We're just thinking. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so yeah, Nicole, I don't know if you have an question. answer for that, Ewan. In terms of so, there was a it, few questions about managing unwanted content and trolling. Okay. Um. So really, it depends where. Um. So I, I, I'll assume it's potentially like in comments of posts. Um. There's different things you can do. So I'll start with comments. So. And people are trolling you and are just being negative um, or sharing political views. Um, it, it may come down to your audit, your organization's social media policies and things. So something that some organizations have is that it's kind of like a three strike warning. So if someone comments something that isn't appropriate or keeps doing it, then they get warned, like, please stop sharing this and you can then mute that individual or you can block them from your page so if that was necessary um that could be an option worth exploring if people are trolling on things like instagram stories and your polls there's nothing you can really do to stop them doing it apart from like blocking them S something that i learned particularly from the gp of hours engagement was if you ask a question like let's say you were doing an engagement and you asked was was my serv that was this this service helpful today? And it's yes or no. If people are going to troll it, they're just going to say no, and that it might <laughs> it might be no reflection of your service. So try to reframe the question and be like, was this particular aspect of it helpful, or what was the most helpful aspect of it? Um, 
to try and take away that but it, it is difficult when you're wanting to give people that freedom to voice when things went wrong um and i know someone did mention they had a private facebook group that's always quite a good space so if you are doing any engagement on a facebook group then do consider your privacy because the more open it is the more susceptible you are to getting some hate um so it really depends where it is but there's definitely solutions <laughs> And then I think the other thing was about how to kind of boost your social media presence. Is there particular times that should be aiming for, aiming it towards a particular audience as well? So, and do we actually pay for the posts as well? I think that's that's came up quite a bit. Um, yeah, so that's a that's a webinar in itself. Um, I, I, I'm no, I, I'm definitely not, I'm definitely not the peak expert of it. Um, I've seen some people say that if you post, I think, Facebook and Instagram you want to be posting at like 10 to 11 in the morning um, then you'll get more views but I think it is quite a case-by-case -case basis what you can do is Facebook allows you and if you have any publishing platforms you can go into like face metal business I think it is and see when your audience is most active and um, that you are that's the thing you can do it is tricky with the algorithm because obviously organic reach is tough so organic reach is when you're not paying for it and Facebook wants to make money so it wants you to pay for it um so it is it is tricky if you have the money there um and you want to explore it then I would definitely encourage it just that you will definitely notice you'll get a much higher reach um but you probably have to think about that return of investment and that I don't know if you did like I know someone who boosted a poll a survey on twitter um using like a hundred pounds over five days um and got like six times the amount of reach as normal um but i don't know how many survey completions that translated into um so it's it's it is it's very tough something that i do think is sometimes best is if you can find any like local groups or local like a page which is like running group of <laughs> this city or whatever if you can build some relations with them and you can work with other accounts and try and harness their audience then that's a way that you can do it for free um but it is definitely tough like if you have the budget then i would say maybe explore paid promotion um but if not then definitely look at how you're kind of harnessing other social media accounts um and then do some research into your online like when your audience is most online there was some um chat around along with the time and you and there was some chat around reposting and repurposing as well so that probably links in with what you're saying about you know if there's chat going on that's linked then you know do a bit of reposting and kind of a uh, reflagging it up um so i don't know if that's something that you and, would recommend yeah so um if you are reusing content, um, I there's don't. It depends how often you're reusing it. Um, so if you were doing something like a, it, it would really depend how often you are posting. You wouldn't want it to be that if people went onto your account, they saw the same post or tweet three times in a row. Um, but if you are doing working on a campaign is very similar messaging it does get tough like trying to reword the same sentence a hundred times <laughs> um, so like if you can even add like a minor tweak in the wording if you can use a different image then that's a good way um sometimes try to base it around the call to action but if you are putting out more content so if you've got maybe like two or three posts going out a day um on a platform like Twitter where things are getting published all the time put out then I would def definitely say it's fair enough to repost it um but that's maybe me being it, it depends if people if it if it keeps doing well then that would be a sign I would maybe judge it on the analytics part of it that's a good point I would look at how people are engaging with it and if each time it does really well and people like it and people comment and people click on the survey then that's a sign that it's working and if not then maybe change it up. Okay, anything else, Nicole, that you've picked up? 
there's also a bit of chat about like kind of working out capacity and resources and how GGC manages their social media presence. So like how many staff are involved in it as well. Yep. Um, so how many staff we've probably got, I would say three people that are like on it, committed, like <laughs> we're, we're there. Um, and then there's other people who feed into it. Um, so it does, it, it does take work um and it depends because you want to make sure that your social media is to try and get as two ways possible particularly if you're doing engagement and that increases your capacity um something you could do is say um is allocate time as like an hour every two days or something um and just have a message like that in your bio or you can send set it up as an automatic response if people direct your page and basically just say like we'll monitor this page every so often um, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible it that becomes a bit customer servicey but what it means is that people will still see you as being quite active um i think yeah no so it does it does take work and it does take planning out but it is worth it i would say if you are trying to do it then think strategically like you definitely don't need a post every single day um and if you are doing engagement on it you might have a bit more like you might have three stories but and then nothing for a week and that's completely fine um i don't know if that helps at all <laughs> there's a question lisa's got your our hand up if you want to come in lisa hi lucy thanks i'm also with nhs greater glasgow and clyde and i work in Yoon's team just uh, for folks information but you and i just wanted to just add to that and say that i think um you know within our communications team they do operate a social media planner um so that is about really kind of a you know thinking ahead and planning and scheduling social media content but we also um link it uh, quite a lot to campaigns around particular themes or service areas or you know you know things that are coming up so it's it, it as you say it's it's, it's it is done in quite a sort of strategic planned way yep for sure um and if you can harness any days like there's so many day of this this month um make ones off if you if you'd like to i think you can <laughs> um that like if you can use them as inspiration for different kinds of content then i think that's always a good place to start is there any other themes nicole that you have any questions there were, were some questions about how we actually use the feedback and what we do with it so like the twitter polls were they included in reports how we action the feedback as well Yep. Um, so I can add um, that what I'll do at the end of each kind of social media engagement campaign is that I'll pull a report together um, and what that report would contain would really be any the kind of comments that we've received and um, just that kind of quality of these are the words, these are the themes that have come up. Um, I would then share any kind of specific results. So, so many people saw this post and this is what they did with it. Seven liked it, three commented. And then you'd have that the same for the Instagram stories. So you'd have so many people engaged with it. Um, and you have all those numbers then. And then what we do, um, Lucy, you'll have a better idea of this. But what we would normally do if you take two bit of hours is that that social media engagement campaign report is then kind of built into the overall engagement report. Um, and then those results can then be shared with the service. Um, so I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, you also publish them back onto the individual platforms. That's the word yeah, I'm thinking of. Yes, so you do have like a summary back. It's not that the poll just disappears. It's like the results are published. Yep. Um, so that's another thing. It's a good, good. That's a good point, Lucy. It's good. It's good practice to show you are listening and do the poll, do the stories. Um, but then it's good practice to get into if you can actually demonstrate this is what we heard. Um, and then if in the future you can then go back and say this is the change that has led to this is what's happened from it and that's even better just to show that like people's feedback and voices have actually made a difference in terms of how it's actioned um that's kind of specific case by case so it'd be difficult to say how it is actioned and um, but something like the service um, was quite a clear one in that they provide feedback with 
particular topics. Um, so for them, if they'd known people want a lot of support with, let's say, like well-being, um, they could then look at like the resources that they have available for well-being and make sure that they're as effective as possible. But that's case by case. Have we got any more questions? I think we're kind of running out of time slightly, so I don't know if there's any any other ones. I think you there was just call. a bit of concern was, uh, raised about people who don't use social media. So it's probably just to explain that it's not one size fits all that will be yeah. used with traditional methods of engagement as well. Yep. Um, so I mentioned that it's a big weakness. Not everyone uses social media. Not everyone's on social media. It might not even be because you can't use it. You might just not want to. Um, so it's definitely not the only way that you can or should engage. Um, it's important to have that kind of digital and non-digital approach. Um, but Lucy, you've got a good example of where digital engagement has helped. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. like you were diverse. Yeah. Yeah. So um, there was a, a a group that was brought together for um, neurodivergent services, and the feedback that we got for that was that the they felt that the general feedback that we got was that social media was um, actually a bit of an an inclusive method because uh, they felt that they were able to lessen social anxiety and they were able to attend from their own homes. So it was something that actually enhanced um, members of that group to actually participate. So that that was quite a, a nice kind of um, thing to hear. But again, as Ewan says, it's not that this is uh, replacing traditional engagement. It's it's something that we've, everyone's had to explore during the pandemic and it's just keeping what the, the good practices that that's brought when things start to open up and that, and maybe putting um, focus then in the, the areas that are harder to reach or the groups that are hard to reach so that you've kind of got you put your resources kind of where they're going to be best used I think. Um, I was going to see if we have literally four minutes left so we had a, a wee minute I don't know if Christine you or Michelle Mayer wanted to maybe say anything about their YouTube and Vimeo and LinkedIn that they use for their platforms? Yeah, um, quickly. Christine here, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we use YouTube, it's, it's kind of quite a newer channel for us and at the moment because we have around 255 subscribers so it, that limits your interaction as a community but once you get past excuse me, a certain number of subscribers, you can then create communities in YouTube. So that's the, the goal, if you like. But currently, we use YouTube um, to kind of share our content across social media. So we'll be linking to YouTube from Twitter to build subscribers, but also to link to videos, obviously. Um, and also you can do things like live premieres of videos on YouTube. So you can, that's one way that no matter how many subscribers you've got, you can invite people to come to a premiere of videos. And we find we get good chat when that's happening. Um, so we can base kind of have a video and base discussions around it and things like that. Um, link, yeah. LinkedIn again is a bit newer. Um, our staff team have LinkedIn for their professional contacts and what I found really useful as a comms person is um, finding other comms professionals but also engaging with individuals at things like HSCPs um, where sometimes it's quite hard to reach a specific individual but um, most people are on LinkedIn. Thank you very much, that's really interesting. Yep, um, and just to add to that, like LinkedIn has a lot of quick has interactive features as well. Um, so I think if you can put polls and things up, um, and people love a good chat on LinkedIn. Um, so if that is your audience and you are looking to engage on social media with kind of professionals, then definitely I would explore LinkedIn as a new as an avenue. Okay, Nicole, is the I think that's I think we're running out of time basically. <laughs> it's been too interesting, but we're running out of time. There's been loads of chat. That was the main of themes. Yeah. Um no, I think that is quite impressive to see some of the chat as well, just about the trolling. I think that's been an issue for some people yeah. as well and negative feedback. Okay. I'll hand back to Shannon. Thanks, Lucy. Thank you to you and Lucy, Nicole and Lisa for today's very useful and very informative session. 
Thank you to all of you for joining us today and for all your comments and questions uh, in the chat box. And it was great to see that at one point we had 170 people on the call uh, this afternoon. I just saw you and Rosie's eyebrows there, so I'm pleased you didn't know that while you were doing your presentation. We will be sharing the presentation slides and the recording on our website. We do welcome your feedback uh, about webinars and if you have any suggestions for future topics, please get in touch with lynda.young14 at nhs.scot. I'm sure Linda will put that in the chat box for us. Our next webinar will be in September and more information will be available on our website, which is hisengage.scot slash events. It's lovely to see you. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you.